What's up guys, Mike Tierney here from Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about air compressor accessories. So tons and tons and tons of different accessories that are available. Um, you know, what do you need? What can you get away with? What do you really don't need right away? Uh, we're gonna go through a few of the major ones. So when it comes to air compressors and putting the system together, um, you gotta be careful because Sometimes less is more in this case. Um, if you add too many components to the, the air system with a very small air compressor itself, it can cause the air to change its properties and then not work the tool properly. So when you select your components, you're basically selecting it all on pressure and flow again. So CFM and PSI. So larger flow systems, you want to select larger components to allow that air to come through without restricting that air flow too much because you're going to lose your pressure throughout the system. So what you start with doesn't necessarily mean what you're going to end with. So when we start looking at the components that are key to a successful system, it will all depend on what you want out of that system. So first of all, you've got your compressor, we've already talked about. You've got your air tools, we've already gone through that. Now what's in between? So coming out of your compressor, the air is not necessarily clean. So in a lot of cases, you wanna to try to clean as much as that air before it goes through your air system and then into your air tool. So you can get individual units, you can get kits like the one I'm gonna show you here, you want to have an air filter. So an air filter um, basically is a, an acrylic bowl that air passes over, it creates a low pressure volume, it drops the air, uh, the, the, the solid particles out of the air, and then you can either purge that out or just open up and drain once the air, um, the air compressor system system's shut down. So if you're painting or if you're um, abrasive blasting, formerly known as sandblasting, um, you probably want to dry your air, uh, um, take the air particles out of your air. So you want to clean it. This is an optional thing. In this case, it's part of the unit, but you can also get them individually and you can put them all over the place if you choose to. Um, these are our regulators. So you want to regulate your air pressure to the tool that you're going to be using. So not all tools are regulated at the exact same pressure. Most average around 90 PSI, but you know, you might have something that's a little bit of an anomaly. Maybe you've got an airline going to a little, um, you know, touch up paint gun that only needs 40 PSI, or you, you've got it going to something that needs less. Um, typically a regulator will do that for you. So um, it's got a dial in the middle. Quite often you have to pop the dial down for it to engage and then rotate it to increase or decrease that pressure. Now keep in mind, if this is close to the compressor and you've got a workstation that's fairly, you know, 25, 30 feet, 50 feet away, everything from here on is going to reduce in pressure. So if you set this at 90, next to the compressor and you go a distance away, by the time that air tool get, or that air gets to your air tool, you're actually not gonna have 90 PSI. So it's better to take the individual ones and set them to your workstation. So if you're in a larger shop and you've got a variety of workstations, set the regulator as close to the workbench as possible. That way you don't lose your pressure between wherever you've set it your compressor and then your 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 tool bench. Um, it's it's a way better way. Um, you can get away with um, you know smaller, less costly regulators, and you won't have to worry about losing your pressure at your tool if you've set it. Next in line, a third component, um, and this is an optional component. I would say it's not for everybody. Um, this is called a lubricator. So in this case, this all comes together. This is an FRL filter, regulator, lubricator, uh, but they come again, you can get them in the individuals. Um, a lubricator basically is filled with air tool oil. So we fill this with air tool oil. Um, the air passes over a little straw. It creates a low pressure and it creates a siphoning effect. And it will allow a little bit of air tool oil to enter your system and lubricate automatically your equipment. Now, 
if you're going to paint or sandblast, it's really not suggested that you use a lubricator because if you add oil to that air that goes through your paint gun, you're now going to have oily paint and that's not going to leave a very good finish. Likewise, if the oil goes into the abrasive blast, it can clump that, uh, the, the, the media and that will give you some issues clogging and that. So if you're going to paint or sandblast, I highly suggest that you don't add a lubricator. If you buy it as a kit like this, you just don't add the oil. If you're going to buy them individually, then definitely, you know, stay away from the lubricator. But if it's in a shop application, so if you're, you know, you're working in a shop and, you know, a bunch of guys are using the different tools, they really don't do any maintenance on their tools. You can add the lubricator in line and then it automatically lubricate their tools. Personally, in my shop, I just take a little bit of oil, drop it in the, uh, the quick coupler, and uh, I lubricate my tools that way. What you don't need to do is lubricate your hose and, and fittings. They don't need lubrication. So if you're at home and you have one of these running and you decide, oh, I want to get into doing some painting, everything from there on has oil in it. So you'd actually have to disconnect everything, add new line in, and then start again. The other thing you could do is if these were individual, you could put a quick coupler T inside here between say your, your regulator and your lubricator if they were separate units and you could create what's called a dry line. So if you put a, a quick coupler in before it and then you want to ever you know paint or sandblast or abrasive blast later on, you could just simply click into that, bypass everything and have a dedicated dry line. It's a great way to you know, prevent having a, you know, the cost of, of replacing all of your line. So keep that in mind when you're picking these. Again, less is more. Don't add more than you need within your air system because they do drop pressure throughout as you move air away from your compressor. So FRL unit, filter, regulator, lubricator, or you can buy them on the individuals. Again, they come quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, and bigger. Um, but size them according to your flow rates. Now, if you are painting and sandblasting, I'll call that out a few times because they are somewhat different than your standard air tools. You do want to dry your air. Now, you've got two ways to kind of do that um, in, in the Princess Auto's world. So you've got the small version, so small compressors, low CFM, um, just kind of maybe touch up paints. You're not really doing it as a paint booth. You're just doing it here and there. Um, you can get away with inline um, air dryers. So a dryer will dry the air because when you compress your air, you're going to get moisture. Now the majority of it's going to collect inside your tank. Now every day you should be, if you're using your compressor, you should be draining that water out. Now, moisture is still going to kind of continue through the system. So to prevent any moisture, painting, sandblasting, and your regular tools if you want to, you can add inline um, air dryers. And uh, this one here is a smaller model. It's a great, uh, you know, cost efficient uh, unit for smaller air compressors. It has a, a rechargeable kit. You'll have little purplish, um, you know, dark blue beads that will turn kind of a pinkish color when it's time to change out and uh, there's a visual that you can see on there. This is probably not going to be the best option if you get into the really large industrial compressors. There's just too much air that needs to come through here. So you have another option in, at Princess. You can buy an inline tube dryer. So they are basically a steel tube um, they're, they're to be mounted vertically on the wall, so as it sits here, you have a, an inlet and an outlet. So your inlet's going to come in, and then it's going to pass through and out to the rest of your system. You have a ball valve on the bottom, and this will allow you to drain this. Now when you put your pellets in, and that's what's in this bag here, we take the whole bag, we open up the top, and we dump the whole bag in. So the pellets are going to sit down in the bottom here. 
air will pass through those pellets and um, they're silicone based and they attract large amounts of moisture and the air will pass up, it will dry the air out to the rest of your system. You'll want to maintain opening this ball valve at least once an hour, especially in the summertime and it's humid. If you have high humidity, which a lot of our areas do, um, even just sitting there without even using the air compressor, this will actually start to pull out moisture out of the air and uh, you don't want the water to you know, fill up because you don't want them submerged because you do want them to work. So every hour or so, if you're using your compressor, you should uh, drain out your, your uh, desiccant um, dryer. And um, after a while, they do wear out. You know, uh, I get all kinds of questions, Mike, uh, you know, when do I change these out? Well, there's no specific formula to that. Quite often, they'll start to break apart, so you'll start to see them crystallize coming out as you drain. Uh, when you start to see that, typically it's time to replace. Um, you know, you should get at least three to six months life if you're just, you know, working at your shop at home. If you're more industrial, then um, definitely you're going to have to replace those more often. And you can get them um, as an accessory. They do come separate to each other. Um, it's important that this is installed vertically. Do not, you know, install it horizontally, okay? Because the air needs to pass and the water needs to drain. Now, in the industry, there are a lot of other dryers. There's uh, condensers in that. Um, currently, that's not something that we carry at Princess. These are the, the you know, the, the ways to dry air. Now, once we've treated the air, so we've filtered it, we've regulated it, we've dried it, maybe we've lubricated it. Um, it needs to go through um, hoses. So we have a variety of hoses, different size, um, you know, diameters, quarter inch, three eighths, half inch. Um, the larger the size, the bigger the compressor. You're probably not wanting to use a 10 horse or, you know, um, a two stage compressor on quarter inch lines. It's just too much compressor for you for that line. So you want to go with half inch minimum three eighths. When you're starting to go long distances, so if you've got a big shop that you've got to move air around the shop, you want to make sure that you have large tube. You want to make sure that your hose is as large as possible. Any restriction to that air going distance is a restriction. It starts to change your pressure and you get what's called the pressure drop and adding components, adding all of the things that we've talked about here, start to create pressure drops. So does hose. So the, the more restriction your air has to go through from your compressor to your air tool, you, you start to reduce your pressure. So that's why sometimes we have issues with our air systems. We think we're getting enough air pressure, but we lose it because we've got engineered the system with too many things for the air to go through. So airline, lots of options on it. Some airlines good for shops that have oil. So a lot of oil uh, can turn um, the jackets of airlines uh, really stiff and they will crack. Whereas other jackets that are designed to be in an oily environment, they will allow that to stay pliable. Um, if you're in an outdoor situation where you're high temperature, low temperature, um, some of the, the, the hoses allow for those, those temperature ranges. And they're all typically rated for a, um, you know, a, a, a working pressure and then a burst pressure. So on the hose itself, you'll see an information line and that will tell you everything that you need to know about that hose. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll say working pressure, WP, um, in a lot of cases, 300 or so, or even more. Um, and then, um, you know, what its temperature range is, is it good for oil uh, applications? And all of the information you need is typically either on the package or directly um, labeled on the hose itself in the different lengths. So selecting your hose is based on distance that you want to go, your, your flow of your system, and the pressures that you're actually working with. So whether it's quarter inch or all the way up to, um, you know, higher one inch, um, that's, that's entirely up to the system you're, you're, you're working with. Keep in mind, lubricating the hose is not required. It's just part of it if you add a lubricator in. Now to make those connections, we've got 
a ton of different um, styles of fittings. So in this case, we've got uh, an A and an M style, probably the two most common styles of fitting, quick couplers. Um, there's um, you know, H style, T style, V style. They're all different, L style. They're all for specific applications that have come along and said, hey, we should make a, you know, an air compressor um, style that suits that need. Um, in this case, um, your automotive industry created one, and then the industrial industry created one, um, and uh, we commonly know these as A and M fittings. They are not compatible to each other directly. There are universal connectors that will receive both, but an A male and an M female will not connect uh, properly. They're just designed slightly different. Um, we call them A and M. Um, you know, um, in the industry, they are called uh, the A style, as we know it, is an ARO style. That's what the industry is. And the M style is what they call an indus industrial interchange. Um, they've just added little uh, letters just to simplify it. But um, the, the, the key part is try to go with the same styles all throughout your system. There's nothing worse than having an M style on a, you know, this tool and an A style on this tool and then trying to connect your lines and they never seem to connect. So when you do it, one is no better than the other. It's just preference and um, just make sure that you have all of the same style fittings. It will just make working your shop that much more efficient. Now there are many, many, many other accessories within the air systems, but we just wanted to kind of cover the main ones that we get a lot of questions on, that I get a lot of questions, and just kind of the, you know, the watch outs, it's great equipment, it's just sometimes you just got to be careful on where you put it, because it could cause a ripple effect of, you know, lack of pressure, um, lack of flow, and uh, you inadvertently over-engineer your system. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. See you next time.